Chapter 26 To the Heart The heart of the discipline of personality is threefold. Know yourself, accept yourself, become the creator. As we discussed before, there's been a recent acceleration of catalyst for many people as the planet prepares for a major cycle change in its evolution, a movement into greater love. Our individual and collective processes are also cycling faster, bringing us greater challenges. Perhaps you can affirm this in your own life, but what is the point of all this challenge? Seeing within them are lessons for growth, the fundamental learning is unconditional acceptance in the heart. In recent times, the major catalyst to my own growth has been the work I've done to prepare a new seminar, The Infinite Self, Healing and Balance. The workshop is a synthesis of all passages from the Law of One that concern the essential principles of growth, the mind-body-spirit complex, higher self, seven energy centers, and the path of healing. I first combed the four volumes and compiled all relevant passages, then distilled 48 pages of raw quotes down to a 16-page outline. It was a lot of work, and I had been planning it a long time, but it felt absolutely necessary Having at last completed the task, I have a real sense of accomplishment, but that's only part of the story. After sitting so long with the teachings, then setting them down into workshop outlines, I feel steeped in the mind of higher self. The basic message here is summed up in the title, The True Self is Infinite, and Our Way Proceeds Through Healing and Balance. To heal others, we must first heal the self. To walk in balance, we first must find balance within and between body, mind, and spirit. It sounds simple, and perhaps it is, but it's surely not easy. But it is about self-training, as Ron notes. Quote, The heart of the discipline of personality is threefold. Know yourself, accept yourself, become the creator, and this third step renders one the most humble servant of all, transparent in personality, and completely able to know and accept others. End quote. On the initiate path, a path of accelerated growth through disciplined study, meditation, and service, just achieving the first step requires radical, total, and absolute self-opening. In practice, in the crucible of daily life, this leads to the second step, learning how to accept all aspects of personal experience, whatever comes up. Of course, it's easy to accept the pleasant, but hard indeed to accept what we don't like. Aggressive, demanding, or so-called negative emotions, odd ailments and illnesses, seemingly useless thoughts and distorted notions, self-defeating beliefs and obsessive patterns, all these are grist for the mill of total acceptance. To mill such energies, we must first bring them to the heart. When we open our hearts to the fullness of all personal experience, whether we like it or not, the result is unconditional love of all. Simple. Although the first step of the training is knowing yourself, and the second is then accepting yourself, they're really not at all that different. We can't understand our patterns unless we open up to receive them, at least minimally surrender to our personal process in the moment. But simply being with our anger, desires, or self-defeating beliefs is just the first step. According to Ra and other esoteric traditions, all such psychological experience comes from blockages in the first three energy centers, traditionally located at the base of the spine and in the sacral and solar plexus regions. Importantly, their healing can only be effected through the heart, using the universal solvent of self-love and unconditional self-acceptance. Not easy, but again, simple. I hear many people asking spiritual teachers the same old question, how do I deal with my negative emotions? First of all, realize that they're not negative at all. They're simply emotions, or rather, a certain degree of wounding, inner conflict, and self-damaged wholeness. Secondly, realize that only you can heal them fully by loving them fully, and then simply be with them. As with a counseling client I once advised to celebrate your stuckness, in the process, we simply allow all such feelings to be as they are neither hating, controlling, nor denying them. In my experience, this kind of treatment is the fastest way to dissolve them. After repeated patient practice, their intensity will decrease. This is a law of metaphysics. Such self-work is identical to the healing of our seven energy centers, or nodal points in the human subtle body. 
in this process of unblocking, balancing, and full activation, it's no less than the development of the energy powers of healing. This is because these energy points, from the potent red ray root chakra at the base of the spine to the transcendent mystery of violet ray crown chakra atop the head, are both the vehicle of personal growth as well as the means of healing others. In reality, the quality of our service to others depends solely on the degree of balance and activation of our own energy centers, our own degree of healing, as in the old maxim, healer, heal thyself. But before we get into the details of world service, we should know what actually is the practice of bringing all experience to the heart. To illustrate, I choose some examples from my own life, which also gives you a sense of the so-called accelerated catalyst many of us are now experiencing. Having first been steeped in the teachings of infinite self and the way of balance, I was, however, prepared for these onrushing energies. For starters, bringing all experience into the heart has meant welcoming the pain, doubt, and uncertainty that arose after I gave a workshop where not a single person showed up. In another case, it meant sitting with the discouragement of feeling invisible amidst a disorganized New Age Expo after being warmly invited to come, then making great efforts to attend. Actually, these disappointments turned out to be blessings in disguise. After I opened up to the pain of dashed hopes, I realized that only the quality of one's own effort really matters. Public response is beyond our control. Moreover, I had a somewhat ecstatic experience while sitting in the empty lecture hall with chairs arranged all around me, as well as on the train returning home. I intuitively felt the presence of higher beings around me and realized the lesson being shown. Whenever we open up to greater acceptance, a little more freedom comes our way. Since I work not only in the U.S., other challenges have rushed in from abroad. More catalyst for learning, more material for heart embrace. A few years ago, I was negotiating with several groups in Japan and the Philippines for teaching. Along this rocky road, I learned to accept my anger and frustration born of repeated language and culture misunderstandings of being a target of gossip and backbiting from sources I had assumed friendly, of going for months without a reply to questions I considered essential, then having to change my travel plans several times over. Such challenges, with all their various blocked energy expressions, continued for a long time. Nevertheless, I can see how all this intense interpersonal friction has been a form of hard training, not particularly different from the many hours a day Buddhist meditation retreats I attended in the past. I even started to feel some gratitude for the situations, as I realized that all the so-called trouble I experienced was wholly a product of my own blockages, my desires, my expectations, my hopes and fears, my assumptions and ideas of success and failure. All these gave birth to the quality of my personal experience, regardless of the actions of others involved in the situation. Outside parties are as they are, but our feelings are ours alone. I learned to take responsibility for my anger, blame, impatience, and frustration. These were totally self-generated, from me, to me, for me. Fully owning our own personal process is the first step in learning to love the self just as it is. A reversal of perspective is also at work here. From the ordinary tendency to seek comfort and avoid the unpleasant, to a more useful habit of recognizing opportunities for self-learning and self-acceptance embedded in the pain of conflict and struggle. In this way, our goal shifts from trying to push away everything that is uncomfortable to using pain as an opportunity to further accept all of ourselves, not only what we like. In this way, we learn to appreciate both the space-time self as well as the essential self, the apparent self with which we are all familiar usually identified with blockage, imbalance, and limitation, as well as the deeper self, or what some Buddhists call true mind or big self. Deeper levels of being are revealed by our movement to love, understand, and clarify our process, which demands self-trust, faith, and basic appreciation. While these attitudes can guide us in daily life, they also happen to be the foundation for more advanced practices, begun only after the personality becomes silent, harmless, and naturally loving. As you might expect, Ra, who claims to have given initiation teachings to the early Egyptians, also addressed this adept path, which accelerates the practice of bringing all energy into the heart. Quote, 
The seeker seeks the one, and the one is to be sought by the balanced and self-accepting entity, aware of both its apparent distortions and its total perfection. Resting in this balanced awareness, the entity then opens itself to the universe which it is. End quote. This quote also reveals the essential perspective required to bring all experience to the heart. Awareness of both our apparent distortions as well as our total perfection. If we can learn to rest in this mind of great self-trust, full love will be our path to completion.